seven beginner mistakes that I see people making in Notion. This video could save you a whole lot of time and make you feel more in command of your Notion workspace. Because I've consulted with tens of small businesses who are implementing Notion, I've also made coming up on 100 videos about Notion here on YouTube. I've seen thousands of comments coming in and I've started to notice some trends. I've started to notice some mistakes that people are making time and time again that are taking away from productivity. And Notion should be about bringing more productivity into your life, saving more time and creating systems that work for you. So without further ado, let's jump into beginner mistake number one. And you're looking at it right here. People are trying to use this handheld device to build out their robust Notion databases and Notion workspaces, and it's simply not the best tool for this. I recommend if you can using a computer to build out your Notion workspace. And I'm not saying that you can't use mobile or tablet to utilize Notion. You certainly can. It's great for quick capture. It's great for referencing a document that you might have added to your notes. It's great for a lot of things, but what it's not great for is building new databases, building new systems in Notion. So if you want to save time, I'm going to tell you right now, just try to get access to a computer and use that to build out your Notion databases and your, and your more robust workspaces in Notion. If you have questions about Notion or if you have questions about this video, the best way to get in touch with me is to tweet at me. So definitely tweet at productive underscore dude on Twitter if you have any questions. And don't forget to follow me for bite-sized Notion and productivity related content. We'll see you on Twitter. This is one that's not as common, but I fell into this, so I thought that I would share it. And that is over-engineering your Notion workspace. Avoid it at all costs. Try your best not to add unnecessary crap to Notion just because it's fun to use Notion. I get it, there's some hobbyists out there. You like making databases, you like trying to track everything. I've tried it. But if you're not using Notion to become more productive and you're not using Notion to improve your life, it's just going to become a distraction and a time waster. And again, it's anti productivity. So Avoid adding so much crap into Notion that it takes away from focus. Ideally, you could build a system like the Productive Brain that I've created. This is a template. It's kind of pricey, but if you watch all my videos, you can learn how to build it, I'm sure. You can figure it out. I've put all the content out there on YouTube. It's scattered about. But this system allows you to process things, and it kind of creates a checklist automatically of things that aren't processed so that you don't have to add in a bunch of properties when you're first creating a note or a task. You can just quickly capture it and then go about your day. It also automates habit tracking and things like that to the point where you just have to open the app. You don't have to find the day. It'll pop the day up right in front of you and you just have to check the box on the habit that you've completed. If you watch my demo video on this system, you'll notice that it doesn't require a ton of upkeep and it just fits into your day. It fits into your routines and it puts those trackables right in front of you and those tasks right in front of you so that you know exactly what you have to do for that specific day. If you're constantly in Notion filling out properties and trying to organize everything and adding hundreds of pieces of information, you're going to get scatterbrained. You have to try to keep the main thing the main thing and try to keep the most important things in front of you using things like filters and sorting. And if you're not familiar with these concepts, then definitely check out my full databases tutorial in Notion. This is going to get you squared away. It's going to teach you how to just see what's important for that moment. Mistake number three that I see beginners making is accidentally deleting something in your Notion database. Take a look at my Notion database. It's so easy to click and drag that sometimes you can highlight something that you didn't mean to highlight and whoops, I deleted it. Oh no, where did it go? How do I get it back? That might be your question at this point. And there are a few ways to get it back. If you're quick enough and you immediately hit Control Z if you're on Windows or Command Z if you're on Mac, then you can bring it right back. But if you're not quick enough and you lose it, then you can go to trash down here and you should be able to restore whatever it is that you lost. But if it's just an element out of a page, it can sometimes be hard to get that back, like this element here that I just deleted. But periodically, what you can do is you can right click on one of these high level pages and duplicate it. 
so that you have an instance of it that you can come back to. So this one's taking a while to duplicate because it's actually a huge file and it even has this little loading bar right here, but you can duplicate it. And once it duplicates, you can create another folder in here. We'll just call it backups. And you can actually drag this file into backups once it's ready. I'm gonna open up my side panel here while this loads. And now that I've created this, I'm just going to click on these three dots, hit rename, and where it says my brain one, I'm just going to backspace a couple times and I'm just going to put in the date. So if it's March 6th, I'll just put March 6th, 2022 or 2023, excuse me, hit enter and drag this into your backups. So now you have an instance that you can flash back to within your backups. I'm gonna change the icon. We'll just go with a gear. And now I can just drag any of my pages in here and I can always open them back up and change this name and start fresh from that date. Now you may be wondering what if something catastrophic happens to your Notion account or what if you just wanna move data out of your Notion account or be able to restore it without having to log into your Notion account? Well, what you're going to want to do is click on these three dots in the corner of your full page database and hit export. This is going to allow you to export as Markdown and CSV, which will allow you to re-upload this to Notion at a later date, or you can download it as a PDF or HTML if you want to. You can change some of these settings here, and one of these settings that's particularly important is include databases. So we're on current view right now, which means only the current view of this data is going to get exported. If I wanna export the entire database, I need to make sure to change this to everything and just check these if you see it appropriate. And then you hit export. And this is going to go to work exporting and saving a file to your local device. Let's hit save now, and that should work. Mistake number four is for the true beginners. This is for the people who aren't using Notion databases yet. This is a trap that I fell into when I first started using Notion. You know, I had heard about Notion from a colleague and I heard about how great it was and I thought, oh, I'll try it out. And then I was basically just using it as a fancy word processor. I didn't use it to create any databases or really even leverage the power within Notion. And honestly, it wasn't making me all that much more productive because I wasn't using the databases feature. So if you aren't using databases yet, I know this might sound silly to some of you more intermediate people that are here, but if you're a beginner, I did it. I didn't use databases at all when I first started using Notion. I was just using it as a text tool, but you should really learn how to use databases if you're using Notion because it's going to help you be more productive and more organized. That's the big one, more organized when you're using Notion. Again, if you have any trouble learning databases, watch my full databases guide. It starts from complete beginner and works your way up to the advanced topics in databases. Now, once you do start using databases, I see people falling into another trap, and that is using inline databases for something that should be stored and organized a whole lot better in a full page database. So let me show you, let me illustrate this so that it makes sense to you. We have a fresh page here. First of all, I recommend creating a page that houses your databases. You can call it databases if you want. And then creating your databases as full pages by hitting slash and then typing page and then hitting enter. Now we have a page within our databases page and we're going to make it a table, new database. And we're going to call this table tasks. And then you can go about making your database from here. Okay, you can add whatever you need to. And the reason that you create this databases page with all of your databases in it is now you can actually reference this anywhere you want. So if I wanted to create a task manager page, then I could hit slash within this page and hit create. And we can create a linked view of database and I can type in the database that I created and select it. This way I can always reference this database in many different places with many different views. And I can always have a copy that's just everything that I need to see in a place to edit my overall database. And if I want to, I can also go ahead and delete this entire task manager. You can't delete your tasks out of there or else it'll delete them, but you can delete this entire window there 
and you're still going to have your tasks database over here. But this way you can always view the database without any filters or sorting and you have a backed up file of this database that you can always come back to and work with. This is my preferred way of organizing Notion and interfacing with databases. I prefer this over the inline database any day because an inline database is just created once and then it's very easy to accidentally delete the original and it's not very organized. You're gonna end up with databases all over the place. So create a databases folder, just like we did with the backups folder, and then create full page databases within there, and you can reference them anywhere else in your Notion workspace. I go over this in my databases guide, but I just wanted to bring it up for those of you who are just watching this video. Notion beginner mistake number six, confusing Notion with Excel or Google Sheets. They're two completely different things, okay? They can both be used to handle data, but the way that they handle that data is very different. Yes, you may have similar formulas, but what they're referencing is a whole lot different. And when you're using formulas in Notion, you're referencing the specific row that you're looking at. Whereas in Excel, you can reference individual cells throughout the entire spreadsheet with your formulas. There are some crazy workarounds that you can do with formulas in Notion, but you're going to get very confused and very tangled up if you try referencing other rows in Notion when you're trying to use a formula within a specific row. For the most part, that formula is made for that row and it can only affect the other columns or properties within that row. Whereas in Excel, it's much more free form. It's a lot less organized and it might be a bit more confusing but it's a lot more freeform in Excel and it's based on cells rather than columns and rows, even though you might think, oh, Excel is columns and rows. No, it's actually a full on canvas that you can use and you can create cells and rows, but it's certainly not as structured and rigid as Notion. I found that creating things like financial trackers in Notion is a lot harder than it is in Excel, whereas building a task manager or a note taking manager in Notion is a lot better. So don't confuse the two. Don't think that you can just click into any cell and create a formula that's going to be able to reference anything within Notion. It's not that simple. Mistake number seven, not recognizing the Notion economy that's right in front of you. There are so many people making money from Notion myself included, by being a coach, a consultant, or a template builder. And it's important that you know what you're doing. You don't wanna give others a bad name in the space by going out there and spewing information that is wasting people's time or that's not helpful, but you can create some pretty awesome templates if you know a thing or two about Notion that will save a bunch of people time and people are even willing to pay for those templates if you want to, you can use a tool like Gumroad. I think that their fees have gotten quite out of control, so I'd recommend looking elsewhere, but use a tool like Gumroad and upload your Notion templates. If you're good at using Notion, if you've learned Notion, then this is a great way to make a side income passively while you're sleeping, while you're sitting at the beach. I just went to Florida and I had one of the best months that I've ever had selling my Notion template while I was away on vacation. If you wanna learn more about the income streams that you can create using Notion, then check out the video in the upper right-hand corner right here. Like this video, I'll see you in the next one.